Hey guys, my name's Dave. This is Custom Spray Mods, and in this video, I'm gonna give this helmet a custom spray mod. Check it out. Okay, so I'm no expert airbrush artist and I'm not even very artistic myself. I don't consider myself to be very artistic. So I wanna paint this helmet and I've been following a few helmet painters, a helmet design custom uh, companies and I really like their work and I just, I, I really wanna get that same finish. So I've picked a design that I like and I'm gonna spray this helmet. And hopefully it can help you along the way if you ever think about spraying a helmet or doing some kind of custom painting and mainly focusing on getting flake. Getting flaked down really nice and getting these little flaky lines that you see uh, in, these, in these designs. I really like them and I wanna show you how to do it and I'm gonna try it myself. So let's go along and do this together. Now it's time to get started. So I'm going to take off the parts, take off the visor and some of the air vents. Then I can start masking up all the parts that I don't want paint to get on. I'm not too keen on removing these parts because I'm just not confident they're gonna go on the same as they were before. Because it's a glossy surface, I'm going to sand it. I'm using 800 grit sandpaper on this machine. I've also got a little interface pad on there to help with the curved surface. Finally, I'm going over with a sanding sponge just to etch up that area to make sure the primer can stick. Now I'm going to spray some primer and I'm going to mix it 50-50 with multi-purpose thinners. I'm gonna put it in my spray gun and spray two coats over the job just to seal the surface and make sure there's no reaction when I finally paint the paint. Once the primer is dry, I'm gonna give it a quick sand with a sanding sponge and then clean the surface ready for some base coat. Now I'm going to spray some silver metal flake on this job, but first I'm going to spray some plain silver base coat. Because if the flake has any gaps, then at least it's going to be silver and not that grey primer. Now I'm ready for the flake. I've got a clear base coat, which is also called a binder. I'm adding the flake in, and a lot of people ask how much flake do I use? Well, it's a bit of a guess. I like to put as much in so that you can't see the colour of the ruler when you mix it and lift it up. The flake's all mixed in. Now I'm adding some thinners, 50-50, so it can spray through the gun. Now I'm ready to paint it. I'm using a 1.8 mil spray gun, and I'm going to just keep spraying coats, waiting five minutes between coats, until I've got the coverage that I want. And I want this flake to be fully covered so you can barely see the silver. I want it nice and chunky and full so that it looks mad when I do my lines. Now that I'm happy with the way the flake is on there, I can put some clear coat. I'm mixing up my 2K clear, and I'm gonna put it in my 1.3 mil spray gun. I'm gonna spray three coats over the flakes, making sure that it's a nice thick coat so that it provides a good layer between the flake, and then I'll be able to sand it and get it nice and smooth. At this stage, the flake has a good amount of clear coat on it, but it is still quite rough and bumpy. So now I'm going to let it dry and then I can sand it. I'm gonna use 800 grit sandpaper and a bit of water to help sand that down and make it smooth. So I'm sanding this and you can clearly see the part that I've sanded and the bit that isn't sanded as good and you can see the orange peel there. So if I get it, fully smooth, then when I put my top coats on, it's gonna be nice and smooth as well. Whereas over here, it's still gonna be rough. So I need to keep sanding until it looks like, like this, nice and smooth. And then when I put my clear on that, uh, it's going to come shiny again and then give me my gloss back. So this is just to etch the surface and help my next layers stick. Now that the clear is all dry and sanded, I can start masking up my lines. Now these lines at the end of the job are going to be a gloss flake look. So now that the clear is dry, it's a 2K finish. 
is going to be nice and durable and I can really work it hard and get those lines exactly the way I want it. I don't have to worry about damaging the surface too much because it's nice and strong and I'm going to recoat over it anyway. Keep in mind though that damaging the clear with the knife will show up in your final finish. So be careful when cutting those lines. Okay, so I've masked up one side, now I've got to mask up the other side. And sometimes doing the second side is harder because you've got to try and now match this first side that I did. So yeah, just got to get into it. I've got my graphic, my guide, so I'll try and follow that and get the measurements right. So one way to get nice sharp edges using tape is to use the angles of the tape. Now this is a three millimeter fine line tape. So if I lay the tape over and then run another piece of tape on an angle, well then that can create a sharp edge. And by following the line, I can get a nice pointy finish. There might be better ways, but this is how I do it. Uh, you do have to be careful not to damage that clear coat too much with the knife. I'm trying to just apply enough pressure to cut the tape and not damage the clear too much. Also, a heat gun can help get the angles and get those curves laying down nice and flat to the surface. Now, I've finally got all the lines down the way I want it, and it's relatively equal on both sides. I mean, it's not perfect, but you never really look at both sides at the same time. I've also cut out some extra graphics that I'm going to lay down over the flake. On the front section, I'm spraying some gold candy because the image I want on top of this, I want it to be a gold candy color. I've done that. Now I've got my sticker and all I have to do is lay it over the dried base coat. Normally wait about 30 minutes before laying the stickers down. The base coat will handle it quite well. Finally, it's time to lay some base coat. I'm putting some black base coat over the whole helmet. This is going to cover all the stickers and all that silver. Basically, it might be a bit of a waste, but I needed a canvas of silver flake to get my lines down right. Now that the base coat's dry, I'm going to spray some extra little highlights inside some of these little areas. I'm going to mask up around it and then spray some purple pearl in those bits just to give a bit of an offset in colour. Finally, it's time to peel off all that tape and reveal the silver flake. I'm also going to use the airbrush and create a few little shadows on some of those lines just for a better effect. So the base coat is all dry, I've got my design looking exactly how I want it and I'm super happy I'm ready for some clear coat. I'm going to spray two coats of clear and I'm going to let that dry and I can move on to the next step.
Now the clear coat on the helmet is looking really good at the moment, but I can see these lines and you can feel the lines from the masking. So I'm using some 800 grit wet sandpaper and water and sanding all that clear coat nice and smooth, then I can re-clear it and I'm gonna have a nice, smooth, flat, awesome finish. Okay, so the helmet is done. Looks pretty cool, yeah? Woo! Yeah, let me take it off. Okay, so the helmet's all done. It looks amazing, I'm really happy with it. I mean, it's not perfect, but I don't paint that many helmets and I don't do much custom painting, so, you know, um, if it's something you're doing every day and if you're charging someone for it, then you know, you're gonna try and um, get that detail a little bit finer and just refine your process a little bit more to make sure you get the job done perfect so you can really impress that customer or impress that person that you're painting the helmet for. Now, I mean, um, this is my helmet and I'm just painting it for fun, just for a bit of practice. So I recommend you do that, paint your own stuff, have some practice, and then you can, um, you can get better and better. So yeah, um, all this stuff's available from VG Auto Paint. So you can get the flake, get the binders, all the base coats, um, with the top coats, the clears, all that. And uh, yeah, I mean, I really hope this helped you get a good finish, get a nice flaky lines, get some good, um, you know, custom painting line designs happening because it just looks cool. So yeah, thanks for watching. Um, see you next time.